land is your land, and this land is my land, from the California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. Uh, my name is Becky Shannon, and I'm co-president of the League of Women Voters of Concord and Carlisle. And uh, we, uh, the League is one of the co-sponsors of the Democracy in the Balance program this evening, along with uh, Concord Can, Carlisle Climate Action, and uh, the Northbridge chapter of the Alliance for Democracy. Democracy is a word we think we understand, something having to do with voting by the people, and it implies a certain amount of fairness, I guess, and opportunity. We fight wars trying to give others democracy, but we really don't talk much amongst our neighbors about what, what doc democracy actually means to us. Many define our democracy as being government of the people, by the people, for the people. It is an ideal alluded to in our Constitution's opening language, we the people and amendments have attempted to clarify our rights, but it has been our Supreme Court's interpretation of our Constitution that has provided the daily context of our democracy over the centuries. And that is why a recent Supreme Court ruling is of such concern. We, the people, whether right or left on the political spectrum, have been jerked awake this winter by their ruling in Citizens United versus Federal Elections Commission. This ruling that erodes the necessary barriers to corporate influence on our electoral process furthers the mistaken belief that corporations are flesh and blood persons, but with the great advantages of immortality and access to corporate profits and tax revenue through federal contracts. How do we redress these practices, look beyond today, when the very profits gained by these corporations are used to levy influence through their unlimited financing of our political campaigns? And when this right has been blessed by the Supreme Court of the United States, who are we the people? Doris Hadcock, better known to many as Granny D, at the age of 90, walked 3,200 miles across this nation advocating for campaign finance reform. This month, uh, after 100 years on Earth, she passed away. But I hope not her strength and passion about the need for electoral reform we need to feel that same passion and commitment. We need to walk the walk. If we do not take steps now to more clearly define our democracy, by default, we will have accepted the Supreme Court's understanding that corporate personhood rights are fully legitimate in our democratic process. Thank you all for coming tonight, and especially thank you to uh, Mary White and the planning committee, which have done so much to pull this together and to have us all here uh, to talk about such an important issue that we all in America face right now. So let me just briefly say what probably many of you have heard is what is Citizens United. Citizens United versus the FEC, Federal Elections Commission, was a case decided by the Supreme Court uh, less than two months ago. Uh, and Citizens United is a Virginia corporation that was uh, funded by other corporations, for-profit corporations that they did not wish to disclose who um, or what uh, funded it to make a movie which was conceded by the court. The majority said, we're not really talking about a movie. We're talking about a full um, feature-length political advertisement. So it's called Hillary the Movie. Um, and Justice Kennedy, it's important that we bear in mind, this is not about censoring movies or books. Justice Kennedy said, 
um, we have to decide this big constitutional issue because we're not really talking about a movie, we're talking about a political advertisement. Therefore, it falls within the McCain-Feingold, the Bipartisan Campaign Finance Reform Act, uh, which limits uh, all kinds of contributions in politics and federal elections, but it ex expressly prohibits corporations from doing independent expenditures within certain windows to advocate for or against a candidate before an election. So they wanted to advocate uh, decidedly against Hillary Clinton within uh, the window 60 days before the primary at that time is 2008 election, the primary in which Senator Clinton was running for president. The movie was called Hillary the Movie and again it was virtually conceded that this was about um, urging people to vote against Hillary Clinton. Now that's fine, that's free speech. That's, you know, that's what elections are all about. Even hard hitting, nasty uh, movies. It doesn't matter if it's you know, Hillary Clinton or you know, Senator McConnell on the other side. But we're, we're free to say the nastiest things about our politicians and we often do. The problem was they insisted on, we were gonna say it as a corporation, it's gonna be funded by a corporation and you can't stop us. And, and they sued the Federal Elections Commission. It wasn't the Federal Elections Commission suing to stop them from distributing this. They sued the Federal Elections Commission to say the McCain-Feingold law is unconstitutional. And I s emphasize that because the case is really not about what the case is about. <laughs> um, the, the case, and, and it wasn't decided that way. The, the Supreme Court did not say, you know what, citizens groups that get together into nonprofit organizations and want to pool their funds to advocate, we can't apply McCain-Feingold to that because that's sort of core political activity. They didn't say that. They made a very strong, broad ruling that McCain-Feingold is unconstitutional because corporations have speech rights. And therefore, uh, the, the law that says you, we can limit corporate expenditures in politics, unconstitutional. We can't. Violates the First Amendment. So now it's not about a Virginia nonprofit corporation, it's about Goldman Sachs, AIG, any other corporation because the court has decided five to four that McCain-Feingold is unconstitutional and uh, corporations have free speech rights under the First Amendment to spend all the money they want to advocate for or against uh, candidates in elections and um, there's literally nothing we can do about it. The, the First Amendment by definition limits the ability of the people to pass laws when it violates the First Amendment. The court has said that's what this does. So McCain-Feingold, the result of Citizens United is that the McCain-Feingold Act, which restricted corporations' expenditures in politics, is unconstitutional. So that's gone. The court didn't stop there. Uh, the court said, oh yeah, and there's this 1990 case when, called Austin versus Michigan, where, where Michigan Chamber of Commerce, where Michigan had a law, much like McCain-Feingold, McCain that said corporations are prohibited from spending in, uh, from their corporate treasuries to advocate for or against candidates in elections. And the Michigan Chamber of Commerce sued, went up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court uh, said at that time, that's perfectly constitutional. Um, corporations are not like people. <laughs> They're created by statute. They are given um, privileges by the government to, to amass great wealth, to have limited liability, to have these features that make them clearly not the same as people for purposes of applying free speech analysis. Um, so the, that was a little bit of a problem for the Supreme Court and Citizens United uh, because that obviously is not, that sounds very different than what <laughs> the Citizens United case sounds like. So they had to get rid of that and they did. They said that case is overruled, which in Supreme Court parlance means it's no longer law, they were wrong. And so that case is overruled. And that means that state laws, like Michigan's, that limit corporate expenditures in politics are now also unconstitutional, including Massachusetts state law. We restrict corporation money in politics. Um, the meaning of Citizens United, it, I believe, is that we can't do that and there's 24 other states that have those restrictions. So this decision is sweeping. It's not simply about Hillary the movie, it's not about Citizens United, it's not about uh, nonprofit corporations. It transforms our democracy from one in which two months ago we had the ability, whether we used it wisely or not, we had the ability to 
advocate and develop and even argue with each other about what is the right role of corporations in politics and to come to some policy resolution that might be good enough, it might not be good enough, but that's what the laws are and that's what McCain-Feingold was. We had the ability to do that. We don't anymore. So what does that mean for our democracy? Well, if you thought we had problems before, and we did, with money in politics and corporate money in politics, uh, that looks quaint by comparison. Um, let me give you just some examples. The, uh, the corporate profits of only the largest 100 co corporations in the 2008 election cycle were $605 billion. billion. Uh, all of the political spending by the candidates, the federal and state candidates and their PACs, uh, John? $5 billion, thank you. Um, so if, you, if we do the math, and John did this for me so I can tell you <laughs> what it is, it's less than 2% of corporate profits could outspend all of the political spending in all of the elections in, in just that one cycle. Uh, and, and that is staggering. I mean, that is staggering. Uh, but it won't just be that. It's, you know, school committee elections, you know, water district election. I was a water district trustee. I forgot that until I heard it in the bio. I guess, <laughs> I guess that's in there. But, you know, if, if somebody thought I was, a corporation thought I, you know, wasn't going to do the right thing on commercial rates on the water district, I could find, you know, Clements, bad for water, bad for health ads or something in this little municipal election. Uh, you know, justices, justice in America, 38 states elect their justices, uh, elect judges to decide cases, 38 states. Though we already had a problem, fortunately, I, I, fortunately in my view, Massachusetts isn't one of them, but we already had a problem in those states with money pouring in, money of people who had, and corporations who had a, a specific interest in the outcome of what those judges would decide uh, pouring money in to, dis to, to sway the vote and determine who was going to be elected a judge or a justice on a state Supreme Court. The money, the, the staggering amounts of money, and not just the staggering amounts of money, the, frankly, the blessing that the court has given to corporate spending in politics now pours into elections about judges and every other election. So if you are serving on a on an elected board, if you're serving as a judge, if you're serving as president, if you're serving as school committee member and everything in between, uh, every decision you make, every conversation you're having with a corporate lobbyist, even if they don't say it, you know that all your fundraising isn't going to amount to much if they aren't happy with what you're doing. Um, another example, uh, Montana. Uh, the Attorney General of Montana is very concerned about Citizens United and what it means and has testified in Congress in committee hearings about it. And uh, in his testimony, he said that the average, let me stop first, in Montana in 1912, they passed a law banning corporate expenditures in politics because corruption was rampant in Montana politics. Corporations just controlled the Montana State House, and the people uh, said enough, and they forced a law through to ban those corporations. So that stood for over 100, almost 100 years. Um, that's now gone effectively. Uh, the, the Montana Attorney General testified that the average cost for the citizens' state legislature in Montana for the winner was $17,000 in spending. So if you wanted to put together a campaign and with your friends and neighbors and try to go door to door um, and maybe get some leaflets and you know, maybe if you really went wild, uh, um, you know, some refreshments at a, at a rally, and you might spend $17,000. Uh, now, the corporate, corporate expenditures aren't, you're not allowed to ban those in Montana anymore. Uh, I guarantee you it won't be $17,000 for the average state legislature race um, in 2010 or 2012. Um, and uh, what that does to a citizen legislator, I can't imagine. I mean, it's just gonna be money that will pour in and already, literally on March 8th, so within the last week or two, two development corporations, and you think about Montana, there's a lot of mineral wealth, a lot of you know, competition between uh, wealth of resources and the public lands, the public ownership of that wealth. 
uh, well, two development corporations have sued to strike down the Montana law, and I think they'll probably win, much as I don't want them to, but I think they'll probably win under Citizens United. So that's why the Montana Attorney General is down in Washington testifying about that. So that's what Citizens United did. That's some of the consequences.